comes to professional wrestling. If you are talking about it, we are talking about it. Welcome to the Wrestle Chat Podcast with the Ant Man. And welcome to Philly. WrestleMania 40 weekend is here. Hi, I'm the Ant Man. He's Michael Glavin, the Glavalanche. Has anybody called you that since we've been here so far? Since I've been here, no, but Not that's a. Uh... No, but I'm going to get some t-shirts made yeah. and have it. We definitely have to get Glad it'll, Avalanche t-shirts. It'll, for it'll spread. WrestleMania 41. Yep. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. WrestleMania 40 starts tonight. Before that, we have NXT Stand and Deliver. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with us. Thanks for uh, watching this morning. Uh, it, it's early for us, and it's early back home. Well, this is home time for you. Yes. This is not home time for me. Yes. You, you jumped into the future and you lost a part of your life that you will only get back when you return to your native country. <laughs> of Texas. <laughs> of Texas. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, man, we're excited about uh, oh, the weekend already has been just, just chocked full. We've been here for the, um, uh, the WWE Hall of Fame last night, uh, SmackDown absolutely packed you guys saw that the the entrance was different than normal which looks like that's how it's going to be for nxt stand and deliver as well as monday night raw on monday i'll be on i'll be honest i liked the setup that way it, with having fans back in the back mm -hmm. versus having just a big giant screen there was something there was a different energy about that yeah absolutely the the we've seen versions of that before mm -hmm. where it was still like tarped off behind it or something like that. But seeing just that sea of fans directly behind that walkway was so, so cool. You know, I'm, I'm a production guy by nature. And so I love when things are big, but it was very refreshing to see that with a sold out Wells Fargo arena. And if any of you guys um, follow me on Instagram, uh, you'll see that I posted a video during the uh, LA night segment and that place was lit. It's a Philly crowd. Philly is a wrestling town. And that was just the warm up uh, to what surely will be a great wrestling weekend. So, man, one of the best weekends of the year. Just oh, so amazing. It's called Wrestle Chat for a reason. I want you guys to chime in as we run down the predictions of WrestleMania 40. Also, make sure you follow us on Instagram at Wrestle Chat podcast because we're going to be at nxt stand and deliver we'll be at wrestlemania both nights uh leaving before raw mm -hmm. um we got an eclipse we have to uh yeah uh, go check out yep. as well can't miss it uh but excited about uh, this weekend make sure you chime in uh leave a comment wherever you are uh, i'd love to say hi to you let us know where you're watching or listening from jacks films 03 joined us on instagram thanks for being here till next recharge that's that's my wife i know that's, say hi to That's her. my wife. Hi, wife. You say hi to your wife. Hi, hi wife. Should we leave you alone for a second? Hey, give me the room for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> let's jump into this. We've got to, we got two big nights of WrestleMania. So let's start off with Saturday, the first match. Six-woman tag team match. Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, and Naomi versus Damage Control. We had media day yesterday, and I've never been that close uh, with Jade Cargill before. She is stunning. Yeah. I mean... She is she is more shredded than shredded chicken. It is all protein, all shred. And I was both in awe and scared simultaneously. She is an absolutely stunning individual. We were afraid he was going to use the shredded chicken line on her, which is why Michael doesn't get to interview people. Yeah, just I was. The, the camera. I had to stay across the room. <laughs> it was. It was the only time I've had a uh, fifty foot restraining order yeah, right. without any paperwork. <laughs> I'm looking forward to uh, this match though, because we've got it, her teaming up, the uh, Jade uh, teaming up with Bianca and uh, Naomi. Uh, there has, I mean, there wasn't a lot of story here. Mm -mm. In recent times, it was more of things that have happened in the past because, you know, two of the three in the match against damage, damage control either just made it back or just made it to the WWE. Yeah. And and really, uh, you know, calling it what it is, a lot of this match is about Jade Cargill and uh, kind of her debut physically speaking and what a great group of people to do it with because as you pointed out there's not a lot of story here that gets you kind of amped up for it but if you watch smackdown last night there is an aura around bianca jade and naomi that there's just a lot of power in that group right now and so it's going to be really fun and i don't want to get off track but 
I would argue that Jade Cargill has the second best entrance in all of professional <laughs> wrestling right now. I'm I'm pretty high on The Rock's entrance mm-hmm. right now. That one stands alone. But the entrance that, that WWE has crafted for Jade Cargill just amplifies how awesome she is. And so, man, there's just such an aura around this match, and it, it's going to be fun to see. The Rock doesn't have fake snow. That's all I'll say. That's right. If you uh, if you missed any of our interviews, we had a couple from uh, yesterday's media rounds. I uh, had a chance to sit down with Carmelo Hayes. Had a chance to sit down with Tiffany Stratton. Mm-hmm. A chance to uh, sit down with Roxanne Perez. Roxanne Perez. Thank you. Why am I getting that? It's just right over your head. I'm it's, it's I'm the, approved. It's the first eclipse. I don't know. If, I wonder if that came through the other side or not. I don't, I don't know. know if we could see it uh, yeah. on here. It was so. a big thumbs up that came over my face. It was really interesting. I don't know how that happens. It, uh, but if you missed those, we had a, we had a fun time there. And uh, you never know when you're going to end up right in the middle of the action, including a fight between L.A. Knight and A.J. Styles. We'll get to that coming up here in just a little bit. Let's get to uh, this match right here. And it's going to be a uh, father against son again, just this time in a tag team match. We've got uh, Rey Mysterio. Uh, teaming up uh, it's right here. Right there. Rey yep. Mysterio and, and uh Andrade. Andrade turning on um uh, how do you say the name? Uh Santos Escobar. No, 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 not his not his name. I know his name. Uh El Fantasma, whatever the oh, name of the group. Yes, it's that uh, Elgato del Fantasmo or something. And you got another somebody's get, either you're doing that or it's mistaking these for it looks like it's coming through the other side. So tell us if you can actually see those thumbs up that pop up randomly. It's because I'm using a Mac, and so it's all the FaceTime yeah. features. Uh, but uh, the, last night they, we had a, a turn from um, from Andrade um, and uh, and Santos um, uh, turning on Santos Escobar. Uh, so you got Dirty Dom not teaming with anyone from Judgment Day, but moving over to the uh, the the foes of the LWO. And against his father as well. Our, and our little boy is all grown up and branching out. He's leaving, <laughs> I, uh, which is going to be an interesting storyline as we move forward. You know, you mentioned that there was last night to me that there's you know, planting seeds of doubt inside that group. There's been seeds of doubt from, uh, from well, from the beginning. I yeah. mean, the the, uh, the turn on Edge, yeah. uh, the uh, the adding of Finn Balor, and it feels like it's been nothing but uh, conspiracies since then. But this should be a, a very interesting match, and I wonder I want to know if uh, Ray's going to get the uh, get the belt out and do some whipping again. I would think so, and and you know, in terms of the seeds of mistrust, if you will. Like you pointed out, this has been going on from the beginning, but this group has done what it's supposed to do and help these guys get even more over than they already are. And and if you look at the landscape of what's happening in Judgment Day right now, Damien is probably going to successfully cash in. Rhea Ripley is already the most dominant woman on the roster. Dirty Dom is the biggest heel in professional wrestling right now sorry rock you got some work to do it's booed at his own wedding <laughs> yeah. and uh and you know um uh finn is just finn balor he's doing great work uh jd mcdonough is a great up-and-comer there's just a lot going on in this group and so at some point we're we're probably sunsetting the judgment day you know while it's still hot which is the best way to do it but in terms of this match um, there's a lot to unpack here because as we were watching SmackDown last night, you know, uh, Dragon Lee gets hurt. Nah, this seems a little sketchy. Who's doing this? You know, there's there's some clues there that who attacked him? Could it be mm-hmm. could it be Carlito in a turn that we've been pondering for some time now? Maybe Carlito's still a good guy. I don't know, but either way, there's some mystery that surrounds this. But the big turn from Andrade fantastic moment in his reunion with Zelina Vega going back years ago to when they were a pair um, in uh, Andrade's last run in WWE, a really cool feel good moment that kind of came full circle in long-term storytelling. Mm -hmm. So man, what a great moment. Absolutely. Undisputed WWE tag team championship going to be put on the line. Speaking of the judgment day, they are taking on the awesome truth versus the new day versus DIY versus new cat. Republic versus a town down as it stands for now. There were a lot of rumors that they, they were going to be removed from this tag match. And uh, a lot of rumors that it was going to happen last night at SmackDown. Nothing happened with that match last night at SmackDown. If anything, it, uh, I mean, it really left it neutral and, and untouched mm-hmm. after 
after the show was over with, it was like, well, nothing really happened there. Well, reports are coming out that, oh, they're definitely changing something here. Interesting. You know, the there's been such a change in the landscape over the last six months where for the longest period of time, you know, the dirt sheets would come out with some predictions and most of the time they were true. And in recent memory, even some of the most predominant wrestling predictions from the most predominant people in the dirt sheet sector, I'm not going to name any names, but they've been very, very wrong. And so um, it, it's going to be a very interesting situation to see if this match stays intact. But man, how cool is it to get a big ladder match oh, like huge. this? at wrestlemania you know i don't like pay-per-views that are overly gimmicked but when you have one good outside of normal match like this it's just something to look forward to and going to be super exciting as always i hope everybody works as safe as they can in a match like this we don't want to go into a, a new wrestling cycle if you will with anybody injured so guys take care of yourselves give us a great match and man going to be going to be awesome lots of stipulations but this is the only gimmick match on night number one here tonight at wrestlemania 40 uh you got thoughts on any of these matches comment uh leave us a leave us a note also let us know where you're watching or listening from right now we'd love to uh, love to hear from you we're here in philly ready for both nights of wrestlemania 40 also nxt stand and deliver if you're not following us on instagram yet look for us there at wrestle chat podcast same for youtube at wrestle chat podcast some of those interviews that we had last night or yesterday afternoon um, with some of the stars at Media Day uh, are posted up there. Tiffany Stratton, Roxanne Perez, Carmelo Hayes. It was a, a fun time and even a fight between AJ Styles and uh, and um, uh, um, LA Knight. And um, yeah, and we'll get to that when we get to that match coming up here a little bit later on and kind of give you our firsthand perspective of that. But let's jump over to brother versus brother, mm -hmm. Jay Uso versus Jimmy Uso, we've had some brother matches in the past mm -hmm. at WrestleMania with the Hearts. Yep. Those are uh, pretty legendary. I have no doubt that tonight, Jay versus Jimmy will be epic as well. Yeah, I, I do. Before I talk about that match, I do want to shout out. Uh, I said this to Ant last night at SmackDown. You know, we we tend to overlook Solo Sokoa, you know, in this family uh, situation. But man, how cool is it for another brother versus brother to have main evented SmackDown last mm -hmm. night? So I want to say congratulations to those guys. Got to be such a cool thing to do with family. But in terms of the, the headline brother versus brother match, so much built into this story that's been going on for, what, a year and a half probably? Uh, a long time. Um, wrong. Birth. Birth. <laughs> <laughs> it's been birth. it's been going on yeah. since birth um but just such an epic match and i want to call back to um when they were doing press or a, or a video or something you know jay said to jimmy man one of us is gonna win and then maybe after that we can just go back to being the usos and what a powerful mm -hmm. powerful line uh you know speaking that sometimes family have things they need to settle but after that, in some form, family will always be family. And so there's going to be a lot of emotion and a lot of heart built into this match, regardless of the outcome. There's there's intangible stakes uh, with brother versus brother. So I'm excited to see how that turns out. Got a couple more matches for night number one. We'll jump into those coming up here in just a second here on the Wrestle Chat Podcast. Hang on. Do you ever just want to sit back and talk movies, TV, and sports with your friends? Well, I've got something special for you. Check out the Man Child Chronicles podcast, where four friends hang out and talk everything entertainment and sports. Come and join Ryan, John, Mike, and Jay for a new episode available on all your favorite podcasting platforms. The Man Child Chronicles. Growing up never took so long. You guys had a fun episode that dropped earlier this morning. Yeah, uh, really fun stuff. Uh, playing two truths and a lie, and and talking about some of the best WrestleMania moments. Oh, cool. Um, I think I think uh, it should be uh, ready for uh, on demand now. So go over and check out how some of my buddies really really misjudged some top ten WrestleMania moments. Ryan, I love you, <laughs> but but You're way off, but way off, off man. Some. I, I, I'd take a bullet for you, but I would not trust your WrestleMania picks to save my life. So Man Child Chronicles on YouTube. Check it out.
Those are picks of all time. We're picking night number one. You know what we didn't do is we didn't give who was going to actually win these matches. Uh, let's let's just hit the brother and brother, uh, brother versus brother, since it's the last match we just talked about, Jimmy and Jay. Who do you think is coming out on top of this match? You know, I think everybody with how over Jay is is probably going to say Jay. Mm. I think Jimmy's going to play a little dirty, and I think Jimmy's going to take it. You think Jimmy will too? I, I think Jimmy will take it. I uh, I think for the uh, the I was going to say unification, but uh, the um, uh, reconciliation. I believe that uh, it'll be Jay. Mm. Jay will win this and pull his brother back into to the his fold to the Usos, mm. not the bloodline. It could be the 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 oh, first, away from the dark side. It could be the first block of of the of the bloodline. Uh, starting to take a tumble over the next couple of days. Mm. Uh, we'll, we'll find out. Mm. Uh, let's hit the Intercontinental Championship match. We've talked about this a couple of times over the last few weeks uh, because we have Sami Zayn versus the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion of all time, Gunther, or Gunther, if Gunther. I said it correctly. Uh, but I'm from Texas, so he's Gunther. Um, he has an extra <laughs> syllable. I'm from, sorry, I should rephrase it. I'm from Oklahoma, but I live in Texas. So how about that? It's still the same. Uh, but we've got, uh, got those two going. Uh, if we're if we're picking right now, I'm saying that I don't want Gunther to lose, but I love the integrity and I love the fire in Sammy's soul to win this match and a what feels like a must win for Sammy Zayn. What do you think? Yeah, um, and Sammy Zayn for an Oscar. Can we can we <laughs> so can good. we can we go to that? Um, Emmy, Emmy's. It's on TV. Oh, it's Emmy's. Yeah. My bad. My bad. Um, but uh, but he should get an Emmy because I mean, if Rocky was made today, that's what it would have been. Yeah. Um, great video segments, the perfect amount of Velveeta in them, uh, yeah. but still, but still good. You know, not too much Velveeta. Not too much Velveeta. It's regular Velveeta, not the two percent whole milk Velveeta. Um, you know, I don't want to agree with you too much you know i'm sure we're going to split off on some other uh predictions here but uh but i think gunther needs to hold on to this i really do i think he's still fresh as a champion i love sammy but as we've talked about in the weeks leading up uh to wrestlemania he's not been booked in such a way that him going over Gunther at this point really makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, if we go all the way back to the beginning, I don't think this was the match we were supposed to get, uh, you know, with this combination with Gunther, but this is where we are. And I think um, Gunther needs to hold on to the title a little bit longer. Yep. Yep. I think so too. Women's world championship match, Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch. Interesting story here as well, because there's some history between Becky Lynch mm -hmm. and, uh, and Rhea Ripley. However, if you're talking about who has momentum at the moment, it undoubtedly has to go to Rhea Ripley. The, the fire that we've seen from the fiery redhead of Becky Lynch. Are we still on? Okay. <laughs> we had a circling moment from our video. So, uh, but I feel like some of her, her fires turned into embers mm -hmm. and it's not as hot as it used to be. How are you feeling about that? You know, uh, I love me some Rhea Ripley, but at the same time, you know, they say that, uh, they say that sometimes you just need a jump start uh, to really get back on top. And there's part of me that wonders if this is Becky Lynch's moment mm. to capture the, the strap and start a new run as the man reestablishing herself as, as the person to beat in the WWE. And what better way to do that than to unseat the current, you know, longest reigning women's world heavyweight champion, Rhea Ripley. Um, so right now I'm going to take a shot in the dark and I, I think Becky's uh, going to take it off her of Rhea. Could, it could be an upset here for the women's world title match. I want you guys to chime in as well as we talk through these. Let us know who you are thinking, no matter where you're watching, Facebook, Instagram, uh, on YouTube as well, uh, even on X. If you're watching there, you can chime in, and they'll show up here. We'll, uh, we'll share them with everybody else as well. All right, the big one for night number one. The, the outcome of this match dictates how the main event of night number two goes for Cody Rhodes specifically. I mean, it's going to, it could, the worst it can be for the bloodline is a fair fight. Mm -hmm. The worst it can be for Cody Rhodes is uh, bloodline rules. Mm -hmm. And uh, that would not be pretty as we've seen in the uh, past couple of weeks from the final boss, Dwayne, the rock Johnson. And it, funny that uh, everybody in that family has been involved except for Roman Reigns in those attacks. Well, I, I, there was one. There, yeah. was, was a, there was a little uh, spanking 
Yeah. Uh, a little bit from Roman. But other than that, Rock has done the work in this thing. So we got Cody Rhodes, Seth freaking Rollins taking on Dwayne The Rock Johnson, or Dewey, if you feel like it, uh, and Roman freaking Reigns. That's not his name at all, but uh, Roman Reigns, uh, the undisputed universal champion um how do you first how do you see this match coming out when it's all said and done at the end they're they're Work if, backwards if <laughs> if if anyone you know watching on tv or on the ground here in philly has has a prediction that they are set on for this match they're lying to you there are so many outcomes and variables you know i feel like it's dr strange you know, in Infinity War or whatever, going how what uh how many you know fourteen million eight hundred and seventy one chances of uh you know ways this could go you know and uh, I'm trying to tie all this up in a bow here, but all that to say, there are so many possibilities in this match, and um, it re- like you said, it really does dictate what happens tomorrow night, and and the thing that I want to point out as we talk about this storyline as it continues through the weekend a lot of times we see you know in history these greasy heel characters these greasy bad guys that need their their crew to to win or to keep a title i want to be very clear that roman reigns is is not that character he um even though he has had help in many matches from his people he has proven over the last what three years or whatever that he's more than capable of doing this on his own. Yes. Has Cody been built to be his most intense foe? Of course. But um, I don't think that just because like hypothetically, if uh, Dwayne and Roman lose tonight, that that automatically means that Cody is winning, you know, on Sunday night. So I want to temper expectations to say, Tonight is only one part of this story, and this one part of the story does not dictate the ending of the story or the beginning of a new one. And so this match is so unpredictable, I would encourage everybody to sit back and enjoy it because to predict it is just not possible. It doesn't predict it, but it definitely shapes it. And uh, we're going to see how that comes out. And I say to Roman that if you can win without the help of your family, do it. Do it. Because... You always have help. There's always somebody in your corner. You never walk out alone. You never finish a match alone. So let's see. I, I personally think that it is going to be the bloodline. It's going to be uh, it's going to be Rock and Roman that win this because you don't tease the the stipulation of a match if you're not going to fulfill the stipulation of a match. Something as crazy as that. You, know, you don't dangle that carrot and then pull that back. There's I, it, it, that. That uh, for me gave it all away. You yeah, know? I disagree. I I think that heels got to be heels, and uh, you know when has a heel ever lived up to anything they've ever said? And so I don't think the outcome of the match matters. I think that the bloodline will be involved somehow Sunday night. Uh, heels right. live up to what they say all the time. Yeah, yeah. Lie, cheat, steal. That's what they say, exactly. and they we do. We lie, we cheat, all we the time. Steal. Eddie Guerrero. That was night number one. We've still got another night of WrestleMania. We're going to get to here in just a second. Plus, last night's Hall of Fame. We'll talk about it all here next on the Wrestle Chat Podcast. Last night, WWE Hall of Fame. The headliner was Paul Heyman, and I like that they started it off with Paul. <sighs> Mainly for our day, we were we were out all day long, and we weren't going to miss Paul Heyman. And they were like, we're starting with Paul. We're like, excellent. I love everybody else. I can catch it on Peacock to see it live. It was cool to be there to see Paul live. Rome, we couldn't hear where we were sitting, and even I think if you, even if you sat lower, it wasn't – easy to hear roman reigns give his speech that probably sounded great on tv haven't gone back uh, haven't gone back to watch it yet um however we could hear paul very very well yep yep and what a what a night that that man yet again solidifies himself you know he credits his father 
as being even a better orator than himself. But boy, I, you know, all credit and respect to to uh, the senior Paul Heyman. But boy, that's that's something pretty sizable. Paul Heyman, without any notes, without anything, went out and delivered an amazing, amazing speech, starting out with just Paul Heyman, as he would say, the the Jew boy from New York, and uh, just really put himself and wore his heart on his sleeve and really gave flowers. You know, I don't like using that statement a lot, but really gave flowers to a lot of people and took that moment. Especially Triple H. Yeah. Big time for Triple H. And there's so much to unpack there. We don't even have time for that today. But um, the way he honored everyone that he worked with speaks to who he is as a person. And boy, I'm just, I was in awe of listening to him last night. And, and again, I could rant and rave forever. I'm going to cut myself short on this one. It was very special for me as someone who invested time into learning about him because I was so captivated by the way he spoke and his little mannerisms and his knowledge of the business as someone who really followed him. It was a really special moment for me that, um, and then to be there in person, just took that over the top. So that that's going to be a moment that I'm not going to forget. Great moments from him. Great moments from all of the other inductees into this year's class of 24 uh, WWE Hall of Fame. If you haven't watched it yet, that's up on uh, Peacock and uh, watched uh, watching kind of one at a time as we go through uh, go through the day and have some downtime watching some of those inductions. Uh, really, really good. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. We are live here in Philly right now on the Wrestle Chat Podcast. The chat part of it is you. We'd love to chat with you. So uh, leave a comment. Let us know where you're watching or listening from right now. And uh, let us know what you think on any of the predictions of these matches for night number one or two of WrestleMania 40. Excited about NXT Stand and Deliver as well. That's coming up this afternoon. That starts at 12 Eastern, 1 o'clock Central uh, on Peacock as well. So, man, a, if you like wrestling, today is your day because it, the day is chocked full you got the podcast you got nxt and then you've got wrestlemania 40 let's get into night number two the six-man tag team philadelphia street fight bobby lashley and the street profits versus final testament uh, i'll be honest i liked uh, the street profits when they weren't teamed with bobby lashley and i like bobby lashley when he wasn't teamed with the street profits some there's some story not clicking here for me hopefully I, and listen i'm not saying it's time to abandon that story I'm saying that I hope to see more developed in in that uh, in that uh, unity of of those three uh, because uh, I mean, the street profits were on fire for a while and I still have some momentum. Bobby Lashley is a beast and always to be reckoned with. You team those up and it looks like you can just throw them together and something just works. I think you still have to have a story for them. You still have to have uh, some opposition and boy are they getting it with a final testament. Uh, these these guys are 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 beasts as well. How do you think this match is going to come out when it's all said and done? Looking like it's kicking off night number two. I would have to say that, um, speaking to your point, I think the final testament really needs this win. I think they're a newer group. You know, even though that we've um, seen the the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley, they're kind of just people that are rolling together. They're not necessarily a new group per se final testament is brand new you've got some great uh guys in the returning authors of pain um coming back from um being let go in recent years and then being brought back um love those guys love their look love what they do then you've got carrion cross who's yeah. who's had some misfires only in wwe he was a monster uh character in um in, outside of wwe and previous regimes you know, through some uh, old school Farouk uh, Roman garb on him and tried to call it good. And <laughs> no. And let me not be clear, looking. this is not Carrion's fault. Um, but now we've got a great character in what's happening with Carrion Cross in the final testament now. Yeah. And man, I would love to see them pick up the win to continue to gain momentum, especially paired with Paul Ellering. There's something cool happening there. I still think they're landing on what exactly it is, and that's that's totally okay. You're on target. It's just not a bullseye quite yet. Um, it takes a little bit of time to develop that, but I'm really excited to see them continue to catch momentum. 
I'm with you on this one. I think Final Testament walks away with a victory uh, to kick off the show, night number two. A couple of weeks ago, we, uh, well, let's go back to um, Elimination Chamber. For what seemed to be no reason whatsoever, AJ Styles flew 27 hours to Australia to take a steel chair to the back of LA Knight and then yeah. get back on the plane and take back off yeah and then we saw a couple of weeks later la to paint a little visit to aj styles house a little fight even uh, someone that uh, that noticed that there was still a christmas wreath hanging on the door and my wife goes no no, no. that's a that's a spring wreath what what <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. what I, that's what i thought after hearing that so but they got in a fight and la night got arrested i thought someone could possibly get detained at least yesterday in the media rounds if you haven't seen the video yet make sure you hit our, our instagram or our youtube and you can see the fight between la knight and aj styles when la knight walked into the media rounds i want you to picture this you have four backdrops on one side four backdrop four backdrops on the other looks similar to this just a little fancier had snickers and some other stuff and it was all cloth well there are there are those and, and that's where the uh, the wrestlers the stars would would come sit and then we as as media people would would walk up and do interviews with them and we're standing in line for aj styles when they bring in la knight I was like, well, that's kind of odd that they set those two next to each other. Why are you sitting these guys next to each other? And soon we found out that that was a giant mistake. I don't know. If, I don't know if it's AJ or if it's over. I think it was AJ that kicked Get his the the guest chair over into LA Knight, and LA Knight just stood up and started waylaying on AJ Styles, tumbled to the ground. I say tumbled, thrown to the tumbled and then thrown and then bashed into the wall and then thrown on the ground again with a giant thud a double leg take down from aj on la night and so all of and what's ironic is that we're in philadelphia literally just across the river from new jersey where a 4.3 earthquake happened and i'm i'm pretty sure that the earthquake happened during the scuffle because we felt nothing from the earthquake yep. we just felt these guys banging into walls if you haven't watched it yet hit like i said either our youtube at wrestle chat podcast or on uh, on instagram and you can watch uh our footage of that and, and to be clear to, to promo this video at, as far as i'm aware right now we are the only outlet that has the full skirmish yeah. uh from different angles three cameras three yeah. cameras and so if you want to see the full skirmish from start to finish uh, you're definitely going to want to check out the Russell Chat YouTube channel. We uh, worked really hard to bring you that whole thing. Like, share, comment, the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, but man, these guys are gassed up and ready to go. Yeah. AJ popped up with a bloody nose, and even someone commented on her Instagram, "How do you get a bloody nose when they're just wrestling around?" Well, I don't know. Why don't you wrestle around on the ground? put somebody in a headlock someone could walk away with a bloody nose if you have somebody's face in your armpit or on your chest and and you're punching them and holding their head into uh what is going on with the effects today i assume that you guys are seeing this because i should look at yours too to see if it was happening because on ours we're yep yep it is uh, thumbs up fireworks we're just on fire we have today, no man. idea why these are happening but we're, it, it's happening back to the point though there Thumbs was up. there was much discussion in the media room that was genuinely curious if la knight was injured mm -hmm. because of the way that aj the slammed double leg him, was pretty hard yeah. it, it was it was hard and when you look at it on the video uh that we just talked about you know you're in a convention center on a concrete floor and the only thing separating you is a little bit of carpet mm -hmm. and and you know, if you've ever been around somebody that injures themselves, there's a very, very deep thud sound that happens when somebody cracks their head. Yeah, I can tell you with all assurance yeah. as somebody that was in the room, it was that sound. Yep. And so, you know, they pull the guys out. And what's funny is when they were announcing, you know, the, the dirt sheets were saying changes to the potential changes to the WrestleMania card. I looked at Ant and I said, I swear if it's LA night, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> if he got hurt, I'm going to be upset. Yeah. Anyway, wow, what that, a match. That's the next match on night number two, the second match here. And um, uh, I think at this point, I'm feeling that LA night walks away with a win at WrestleMania. Um, I think AJ is uh, definitely on fire. You, it's interesting. AJ has had his run already in, in WWE. He's accomplished so much already. LA, while they are very, very close in age, is just getting the rocket strapped to him. I think that I think that LA Knight walks away with a big V on uh, in this match right here. 
No, no. Um, there is an intensity coming from AJ Styles that cannot be denied. And, um, you know, I'm a big, I'm a big AJ Styles guy. And to your exact point, his accomplishments and his track record is what is going to set him apart from LA Knight. I'm also an LA Knight fan, but you don't put a guy that's a little more green up against a guy like AJ Styles and don't think that experience dictates the situation. Yeah, I don't think that I would say that LA Knight is green if you're anywhere close to him. I'll just say that. <laughs> well, I'm I'm safe in you're the hotel. I'm now. safe you're in fine. the hotel room right now. I'm fine to speak my opinion. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I also, since I don't see him in the, I probably, I mean, I'm going to be in the press box for the match. So, if if he ends <laughs> up making it up, to yeah. the two or three hundred level, I'll <laughs> deal with it then. <laughs> understand that that's going to be a fun match for sure to watch and no doubt that's going to be hard hitting it's been hard hitting from the beginning i mean it started off uh, i was going to say it started off with a steel chair that's really where things picked up with the steel chair so uh talk about it being hard hitting i think the match is going to be that all the way through and maybe we should have switched the philadelphia street fight from the six-man tag to these two maybe and i mean if nothing else uh, you know, LA is probably going to choke on his gum, and and oh, AJ, AJ Styles will will take the win. But he played it off well, but dad gum. We, we could add a <laughs> we could have had a Heimlich on the from that just uh, on the top rope. All right, next match: United States Championship Triple Threat: Logan Ooh. Paul, Randy Orton, Kevin Owens. So far, Randy Orton and Kevin Owens have gotten uh, they've gotten along well, maybe a little too well mm -hmm. for this match where it could leave Logan Paul walking out of there still the U.S. champ. How are you feeling? Um, I think it's tough to say. Uh, Logan has had a fantastic run mm -hmm. as, um, as the U.S. champ. This one's hard to tell. you got three guys that are very good at what they do. Um, I don't know that I can give a solid prediction for this match. In fact, I don't, I'm going to refuse to. This is going to be one of the few matches that I'm going to sit back, try not to overthink it and take in because you've got three guys that work so incredibly well and have done a fantastic job in a relatively short amount of time to build interest into this match. Even what we saw last night on SmackDown, the, the combination of, of entertainment factor with real life I'm going to beat you up mm -hmm. is very, very well done. So I'm going to sit back, relax, and enjoy and see who comes out the other side on top. Well, with the six team ladder match the night before here on night number one, uh, anxious to see if, uh, uh, if um, uh, Austin Theory and uh, Grayson Waller get involved in this match. They've been involved with the feud from the beginning. Uh, WWE Women's championship match the champ eo sky taken on bailey probably the uh the match with the least fire uh out of the entire card of both nights however um i mean there is some there there is some uh real life what feels like real life um tension between bailey and eo sky with bailey forming the uh, the group together of uh, of um damage control and uh eo and her friends turning on Bailey and and kicking her out. So is this Bailey's moment at WrestleMania to walk off of that title? I don't know. Um, it's a tall order. You know, for a minute, we were getting some involvement from people like Naomi or um, or other people or Bianca or other people that were coming to the aid against, uh, you know, now damage control sans Bailey. Mm -hmm. Um, but we've seen a lot of Bailey's reinforcements kind of turn their attention to other things, their own matches, their yeah. own matches. And so um, I'm, you know, I love a good underdog story and I would love to, you know, see Bailey do some great things. But if I'm being truthful with myself, I think EO is going to retain world heavyweight championship match. Seth freaking Rollins taking on Drew McIntyre was on the plane from Nashville to uh, Philly on a Southwest flight with a giant of a man, Drew McIntyre. And just to get in the good graces of, of Drew, I just walked up to him and I said, hope you kill Seth. Do I think that's going to happen? Yeah, I don't know. I will say that I am interested in this story, though. I, this is the best performance 
that I've seen from Drew McIntyre yes. in years. Yes. And all the way around storytelling to how he's kept the feud with he and CM Punk alive mm -hmm. through all of this with Seth freaking Rollins, because a lot of Seth's attention is over on the bloodline, helping out Cody Rhodes and where this goes. No one knows, and we won't know till night number two, but how are you feeling uh, about that title? Whose waist will that be around? You know, um, I'm not as much of a Drew fan, mm -hmm. if I'm being honest. He is doing great work right now. Um, I will say that, but um, the times that I've seen him as a champion, it's not hit for me. Now, I'll give him an asterisk for pandemic period because that's obviously a little bit of a separate situation, but we've seen him elsewhere too. We've seen him do some things. And he just doesn't hit for me. However, with that said, I'm going to ride the fence here to not upset either guy. Um, I think Seth has also had his run. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it's time to mix things up a little bit. Um, in terms of how that lands, I'm not entirely sure. But I would, if you had to kind of pin me down on it, I would say 51-49, Drew goes over. Undisputed WWE Universal Championship match. What kind of match this is? Well, it depends on tonight, and we'll find we we can chime in a little bit more. You can too after tonight's match because that will really shape how night number two goes. And the main event is Cody finishing the story. Is uh, Roman Reigns going to continue with his? Well, uh, it's funny there were some. You mentioned this. He's taking report that he's taking some time off after WrestleMania. Well, what were you doing before? Mm -hmm. Were you taking some time off? Now we know in his, and we're just talking storyline wise, in his personal life, we hear that, yeah, he, I mean, he's still taking medicine, still battling with, uh, you know, it doesn't just go away when you have leukemia. It doesn't, the side effects and, and everything that you do to combat that don't just leave one day. Uh, so he has been dealing with some of that too and dealing with it extremely, extremely well. Uh, but just storyline wise, when it comes to Rowan Reigns and Cody Rhodes, there's, Man, it's kind of like night number one. Which way will it go? Uh, to be honest, they have us right in the palm of their hand, yep. which is where they want us is to tune in and be interested and talk about it on podcasts and get people's opinions and chime in on social media and, and chat about it. Who is going to leave the undisputed universal champion in night number two? Yes, night number one will help dictate some of that. Um, is it going to be a bloodline rules match? I personally think so. Michael does not. I think that if we if we do have that, do we get friends, family involved in this match? I certainly hope not for Cody's sake when it comes to actually deciding who wins the match. But I, I'll be honest, if there was a way to have Dustin here and in his corner and just watching his back, man, that would be epic. Yeah, this is, uh, like you pointed out, it's it's impossible to predict this match, but I'll be honest with you. Well, actually, first, I'm going to call you to the carpet and say, if somebody were to pin you down right now, ignoring what's happening night one, who do you think is going to come out on top in this match night two? Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes wins it. Wins That's interesting that. because as I get closer and closer and closer to Sunday night, I have this overwhelming feeling that uh, Roman Reigns is uh, going to retain. Alex Bree uh, said, hey, from Australia. Alex, thank you uh, for joining the Russell Chat podcast today. We appreciate you watching. Definitely don't forget to, if you're not already, uh, subscribe. Uh, Russell Chat's giving away a uh, championship title of your choosing. Um, so don't forget to subscribe if you're not quick plug there but back to uh the point at hand you know the closer i get i feel like roman reigns is is gonna retain I, i've got this feeling that it's just not over for him yet that scares me because we, we'd be pretty much guaranteeing uh, an entire wrestling summer without dwayne johnson without roman reigns and cody rhodes without a title around his waist but at if you ask me in this moment I think Roman Reigns retains on night two. I think we already know we're not getting uh, Dewey for the uh, rest of the summer. He's shooting a movie. So uh, that part's out. That doesn't dictate who wins this match, though. Uh, so um, not being, not having the undisputed universal champion, 
would not be anything new when it comes to uh, the world of WWE. So chime in. Let us know who you're thinking as well. You know where we're siding. Where are you siding? Let us know and and pop on our Instagram and follow us there at Wrestle Chat Podcast. Like Michael mentioned, we are giving away either a world or universal title once we hit 10,000 subs on on our YouTube. So uh, uh, yeah, I know. Can you pop them <laughs> after you do the vote? Hey, let's see. Now it's not going to do it because I am doing this. Um, now you just look like a dork. Why is he? Oh, is he hitchhiking? What's going on? There you go. Now, can you pop it? Um, we thank you for hanging out with us today, and we want to hear from you. We want to know. Hang on, we got a we got a couple more comments here. Let's see uh, who uh, Alex is. Uh, I hope that Cody wins. He deserves it. As uh, Alex on Ant's side, anybody on Michael's side? Who's uh, is Cody going to take it? Is it going to be Roman Reigns. We'll find out night number two. Excited to watch with you guys, like I mentioned, our, our Instagram, but also what in the world? I'd stop talking with my hands for a second so people can not eclipse Michael. Um, the uh, If you're not following me on, on Twitter, uh, the conversations continue there. I didn't do anything. Not a thing. Didn't even talk with my hands that time. It's, it's the fans. They like me. Actually, I think that it's Apple agreeing with you that Roman Reigns is going to, to win. Apple <laughs> Apple usually gets it right. I'm just That's saying. That's hilarious. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with us. We are here live in Philly. Follow me on uh, Twitter if you want to continue the conversation during WrestleMania. I'll be on there all night long. It's at the Ant-Man. All right. Anything else we need to touch on before we take off? Does my nose look like a thumb? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no one's told you that? It's weird. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Live from Philly, we'll talk to you on, uh, well, just before uh, Monday Night Raw. <laughs> the Raw After Mania. We'll see you on 3 and 15. Thank you guys for hanging out on the Wrestle Chat podcast today. I'm the Ant-Man for Michael Glavin. We'll see you next time.